All right, you're welcome. It is the Ninja Players GPS show on your online favorite radio dial, a leg better TV radio. And today on the show, I have a special guest with me in the studio today, looking all shining, all pretty. And uh, you know, uh, she, you know, her name is Chinyer Obu. Um, she's a, she's the daughter of uh, you know a popular name in Nigerian football. But I'll leave her with the honors of introducing herself to you, the listeners out there. Hi, Chinyere. How are you doing? Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, you know, talk, talk to your uh, listeners. Introduce yourself. Um, who are you? And, uh, you know, what do you do? Oh, first of all, um, thanks for having me here. It's my pleasure. Uh, my name's Nkechinyere John Obu. And I'm, I'm a Nigerian, of course. I'm from Abia State, or Hofia to be precisely. I'm the first daughter to the former Flying Eagle national team coach, a legend, and uh, he has coached a lot of Nigerian Premier Club sites. And uh, um, I think the last club he played, he coached was um, Aqua United, if I can remember. And um, he's an international football manager as well, and he recently got a point third to a club in Italy, Roman's Eps or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I'm a medical doctor by profession. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm a product of um, University College Hospital London. I graduated 2016. I came out with first class, Bachelor of Surgery and Bachelor of Medicine. And, um, at the moment, I'm working in Sweden. And the name of the hospital I work with is called Austria Hukuset Hospital, Gothenburg. Um, and of course, I play football as well. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> and of course, I play football. And, um, but then, I'm much more into my medical career, actually. And um, football is something that I love so much. I am born into the football family. I have a father who is into the game, a coach, and uh, I grew up and I fell in love with football, especially. I love football so much. I choose football ahead of other sports. And um, as a footballer, I know what it takes to play professional football. And I know what is required of me in the football field. But sometimes it's funny. When people look at me, they, you know, they tend to be confused if actually I play football. You know what I mean? <laughs> My body. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you know, it's, it's, it's normal for people to feel that way. Yeah, my body, because I'm just opposite of female football. What people used to think about female football. And um, yeah. Sometimes they ask me, how do I carry my body, everything and all of that. And a lot of beautiful admire and everything. And even sometimes I feel shy, though. But then it's God-given body. So yeah. I appreciate it. You understand what I mean? Because I'm... Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, how, how do you, how do you uh, blend your football and your... your Medical, you said you're a your surgeon, your medical yeah. doctor. So how do you blend these two together? How do you make out time for both? I know you said you're more into your mm -hmm, medical mm -hmm. career now, but how did you cope with handling both, both profession as a footballer and as a medical doctor? Yeah. Honestly, I got these questions every time, almost every day. Even at some point, I got tired of responding to the questions. You know, the thing is that abroad is a place that you can actually work and still have time to do other things. Yeah. And abroad will work eight hours every day. For example, if it's when I'm going to run a morning shift, I start about 6.45, and I will close around um, 2.30, and normally my training starts 4 or 5. I will train eight, three hours training or two and a half hours, and I still have time to do other things. And being an active person, and I enjoy it, even though in the beginning it wasn't easy, 
But the thing is that um, when you do something you love, yeah. you don't feel the stress. Love is sacrifice. Love is endurance. Love comes with so many things. And um, me as a footballer and as a medical doctor, I am proud of myself. I have to be very honest with you. And uh, I intend to encourage other footballers out there that a footballer can be a graduate. Yeah. A footballer can be a medical doctor. Can be educated as well. A footballer can be educated. A footballer can be a lawyer. A footballer can be anything you want to be, regardless of the gender. Yeah. And this is a problem that many footballers do. Why playing football? They intend to put all their life in football. And when you're an athlete, when I mean athlete, football, anything sports is an athlete, injury happens, it occurs. And sometimes it there can, are- It can end your career as well. It can end someone's career, not my career. Yeah. You understand? So sometimes um, some people have injury on the journey to their professional career as an athlete, as a footballer, as a basketballer, as a sprinter, as a long tennis, and it ends their career. But when you have something doing, when that happens, or when you have retired as an athlete, you got something to fall back on. You understand? And um, I've, when I finished my secondary school, and I got admission to study medicine, and my dad really pushed me so much to go for it. And I, one thing I love my, about myself is this. I don't give up, no matter what. I don't give up. And I'm doing it, and I do it with so much love, passion, and everything. And I got my inspiration from Serena Williams. She inspires me so much, you understand? And um, even my beautiful body you have today, I took after Serena Williams. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, talking about uh, your fo footballing career, how, how did it start? What was the first team you played for and to where you are now? You know, just walk us through how it started and uh, where you are now regarding your football. How did it start? Yeah. When I left Nigeria to London, I was playing um, at the University Academy in London. At the okay. University, yeah. So, but then I didn't take it professional. Because studying as a medical student, playing football, it's hard. Yeah. So I just do it because it's something I love to do. So I took it very professional. After my graduate in 2016, and my football manager got me a club in Sweden called Mondo FC. Okay. You understand? So I played in Sweden. From Sweden, I played at Mosa. I played various clubs in Sweden. So. The last club I played in Sweden is um, Biko Hekim female team. And we actually brought Biko Hekim female team to the lamp light. So, but recently, my manager is working on getting me a club in, in Poland, which is on progress. And um, after the Christmas, and after my call up at the national team, I'll be heading to Poland. And I'm... Um, and my medical career is actually a plan B after football. Yeah. Yeah. But the reason why I started working and I'm playing is because when I moved from London to Sweden, and um, I realized that after football training, I still have time to do other things. That's why I started working. I'm beautiful enough. In the area I specialize on as a medical doctor, my team manager, his wife, is a boss. So it was very easy for me to be employed. Yeah. You understand what I mean? And uh, I'm the only African and I'm the only Nigerian. In the team? No. Yeah, in my team. Okay. You understand what I mean? And even at the hospital, I'm the only Nigerian in my team there. And um, that makes it very easy for me. And coupled with the fact that female football don't pay that much it don't pay that much. You can't compare female football with the men's football. You understand what I mean? So, and I'm, yeah. So I'm earning from the both sides. 
even though what I'm earning as a professional female footballer is a peanut. You know, considering the fact that female football don't pay. So you earn more from yeah, your medical exactly. profession so than I, what you earn in football. Exactly. You understand what I mean? So and I earn more as a medical doctor. And um it's been an amazing journey. It's been very it, it's been something I'm I'm always very thankful to God. You so, understand? So what what position do you play on the pitch? Are you a defender, midfielder, an attacker? I play from right foot back, number two. Oh, you play from right football. Yeah, you understand. And oh. I, yeah, but with an amazing understanding with my teammate playing from the right, from the right wing. Yeah, yeah, right wing number seven. Yeah, we can even switch when I overlap. She can come to number two. Then after I'm finishing what I'm doing, then I have to like come back so we can switch. All right. So, um, who who do you look up to? as a footballer in that uh, position or which uh, footballer can he can be a female footballer mm -hmm. he can be a male footballer but which footballer do you look up to as a role model that you tend to emulate your game on you know it can be a nigerian player you know whatever but which footballer do you model your game on <laughs> Neymar. okay yeah and of course Mikel Obi. And I'm um, oh <laughs> all right, all right. And, so, and the last, not but the least, um, of course, I appreciate Kelechi and Ajo. Okay, so these are the players you uh, exactly. you look up to yeah. as, uh, as role models yeah. for the national team. Now, um, talking about your profession as a medical doctor, as a footballer, mm -hmm. being the only Nigerian amongst the people you work mm -hmm. with, how, how does it make you feel? I mean. You know, racism is a big, big talk now in football. You know, we see what happened, you know, across the globe with racism and, more, and all that. Do you get to feel that way from the people you work with? How comfortable are you working around the people you work with, being the only Nigerian amongst them? Yeah. The thing is that I, um, I have a very good relationship with God. And everything I do, I put God first. Yeah. Um, and when the grace of God speaks for you, Nothing can stop you. I'm a child of grace. Divine destiny is in me. I am destined for greatness. Where I go, where I am, any plan I do, grace speaks for me. And in the football field, I'm the only African, the only Nigerian. And in my working place as well, I'm the only Nigerian. But I don't notice them. I don't notice them. Do you get intimidated at some point? Like I don't because I try not to notice them. I'm a very focused young girl. I'm, a very, I'm too focused. I'm too focused to notice such negativity. Mm -hmm. I'm very focused. I don't notice them. I just do my own thing. You understand what I mean? Yeah, of course, I know there are racists. And you know these white people, when they laugh at you, don't think they're happy with you. Yeah. They are too fake. You understand what I mean? They are too fake. But then, I don't notice them and... I like them for who they are, like we're human beings, you understand what I mean? But I, I don't let them cross their boundary. And I won't even give them that opportunity to cross their boundary. And I won't give them that opportunity to show me that racism that will affect me emotionally. You know, how, how big is racism in Sweden? You know, is it something that uh, occurs frequently? Have you been racially abused before? Okay, let me put it that way. Have you been racially abused before? Yeah, because, you know, because I don't notice them, that's why I won't, okay. I won't allow to be abused, you understand? But when you talk about race in Sweden, Sweden is a big, Sweden is a good country. Sweden is actually one of the best countries in the world. You understand what I mean? We have less racist in Sweden, in Sweden compared to Italy, Spain, Greece, Germany, Finland, Denmark, Norway. You understand? Free, uh, Sweden is a, a free country in a sense that I'm... You can be anything you want to be in Sweden. The government is there to support you, to encourage you. And um, it's an amazing country. I have to be, uh, I'm very blessed to be in Sweden. I'm proud to be in Sweden. By the grace of Almighty God, wherever I am today, whatever I'm going to become in the future, Sweden made me the amazing, beautiful woman I am today. Sweden gave me opportunities, gave me future. 
Sweden gave me hope, gave me shelter, gave me so many, I have so many reasons to be thankful to God and upon the land of Sweden. So for that reason, I don't, I don't notice their imperfection. You know, in every country, they have their good side and their bad side. Yeah, sure. Even here in Nigeria, we have racist. You understand yeah. what I mean? You know, just like when you're in a relationship with someone and I'm trying to focus on her good side more, not her imperfection, because we human beings, nobody's perfect. And the country we are talking about racist is human beings that make up a country. It's not like country himself is racist. It is the people in the country is racist. So I don't notice them. All right. So um, let's let's talk about your 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 family now. Your dad. Um, you know, tell us how many how many footballers are, are they in your family? I mean, you play football. Your dad uh, is the former manager of the under twenty side uh, under twenty World Cup. They went to the World Cup and they lost in the finals to Switzerland. Now, but tell us about your family background. Are you the only footballer? And how many are you? Just you know, just give us a, a background about your family and uh, your siblings. How many footballers do you have in your family? Okay, um, we are five in number, including me. I have two sisters and I have two brothers. And funny enough, I'm the only one who took after my dad. And my dad is my best friend. So just you just me. play football? Exactly. And my dad is actually one of the reasons why I'm not putting football anytime soon, as long as I'm still fit for it. You understand? Yeah, the only thing that can actually make me to quit football as long as I'm fit for it is only when I'm, preg- when I'm married and I'm pregnant. You understand? Of course, I'm going to give a break. After, after childbearing, then I'll hit the field again. So, it's a game I love so much. So, for that reason, I want, to, I want my dad's name to go global, even though his name has gone global already, even though Nigerians know him. Africans know him, to an extent the world know him, media knows him, Google knows him, but uh, I want God to use me and keep making his name go global. So um, how do you handle the pressure? You know, like you said, your dad is, is well known. You know, if you talk about Nigerian football, mm-hmm. he's managed teams in, in yeah. the Nigerian league, he's managed the uh, under-20 national team. How do you handle the pressure, you know, being the daughter of um, a reputable, a respected man in Nigerian football. How do you handle that pressure? You know, being the father of more like a celebrity, mm-hmm. you know, being the daughter of more like a celebrity. So yeah. how do you handle all that when you move out and you move around? Mm, good question. I'm just myself. I'm just myself in a sense that I, I, don't, I don't get carried away by that. I don't get carried away. And um, of course, it, it, it's, it's an honor. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's an honor, but I, I don't get, I don't let it get to me. You understand what I mean? So, I feel okay. I feel okay, even though somewhat, even though sometimes, um, yeah, people call my dad and they tell him, your daughter in Sweden, I know her. She's doing great. She's doing this. She's doing that. And my dad will call me. You know, someone called me and, you know, the person was talking about you and everything. I said, oh, cool. So I just feel okay. I don't get carried away. You understand? So that's just what it is. All right. So um, you you when, when did you get into Nigeria? Mm, I came back on Sunday. Okay, that was that was a few days ago. So um, you know, tell us tell us why. Uh, when was the last time you were in Nigeria, and um, why are you in Nigeria this time around? I mean, we you know the listeners needs to know. Or you around you, had, you talked about the campaign for yeah. uh, national team. So tell us about that. And yeah, the last time I came to Nigeria was 2019. Was the last time I came to Nigeria. So uh, ordinarily, I visit Nigeria every year, every Christmas. You know, and um, 2019 I came to Nigeria. 2020 I didn't come because of the COVID. Mm-hmm. And working as a medical practitioner and medical doctor so we're in the front line yeah. you understand what i mean so a lot of things were restricted it's been now that things have started getting back to normal and um then this year the reason why i came to nigeria of course i missed my family you know a whole two years i didn't come to nigeria if i would say 
to spend my Christmas with family and friends. And of course, I have a call up at the U20 at the U20 national team yeah. for the preparation of under 20 female World Cup next year, 2022. So right now, the qualifying series is going on. So and I'm by the grace of God, I'm going to play the two last qualifying series. The one that will be played 23rd and 24th of January, and the one that will be played 3rd of February to 5th of February. So that's actually why I'm in Nigeria now, and I'm immediately after Christmas, I'll be going to camp. Um, the camp is in Abuja. So, okay. And from there, I think ooh, I, maybe one of the games will be played here in Lagos. I don't know. All right, so we are we are looking forward to that one. Now let's uh, move away from from um, football a, a bit. Now uh, let's talk about uh, the Super Falcons. Um, you know, the I don't know if you saw the, the tournament they played in Lagos recently. What do you make of the team right now? The players we have the likes of Aziza Oshola, mm -hmm. Rashidat is there, Anome AB, you know, and some Desire Paranozi. These these ladies are still playing football yeah. for the Super Falcons. Um, what do you make of the team in general, the Falcons? Is it, um, is it a team you would like to be involved in at some point in the future? Would you like to be part of the team and all that? But in general, what do you make of the Super Falcons so far? Okay, this is what it is. Um, for example, by the grace of God, I'm already a celebrity myself. Even though I may not be a household celebrity at the moment, and I'm working on it, and I'm going to get there. And at the same time, I'm not desperate to play for the Falcons. I have to be very honest with you. I always allow things to happen naturally. Yeah. And, and I think things is working out. And, you know, life is a journey, not a competition. And a journey of thousand miles begins in a day. And the journey has started. Here I am now. I'm at the Nigerian under 20 female national team. Yeah. Hopefully one day I'm going to play for the Falcons, which is the the senior female, female national team. Yeah, yeah, one day I'm going going to get there, and it will be my pleasure to play for the Falcons. Though it's going to be my pleasure, and I can actually say that I'm already on the track. You understand? National team is national team. Either under 20 or under 17. So yeah. as long as God has made it possible that I'm privileged to be called in the national team, so getting in Falcons. It's easy as A, B, C, with the grace of God in my life. So I'm going to be there someday. So, so if if Sweden calls you now, and Nigeria calls you, who are you going to pick? The Swedish female national team and the Nigerian female national team. Um, even though I know that I'm a Swedish citizen, you understand what I mean. Um, I wouldn't want to play for the Swedish national team. I love my country. I love Nigeria. I'm proud to be a Nigerian. I'm proud to be an African, above all. I'm proud to be an Igbo girl, my father's daughter. So I want to, I want to make Nigeria proud. I want to make my father proud, and of course, I'm gonna make my future husband proud. You understand? Even though I want my dad's name to go global, you understand? At the same time, my future husband's name is gonna go global, and I create a very good, um, a very good opportunity for my children as well my unborn children as well when i'm married and have kids so i would want to play for the yeah. nigerian national team i mean the super falcons yeah talking about nigerian national team, i'm already in the national team you understand what i mean so it's just life it is stage by stage today now i mean under 20 then by the grace of god i'm getting there so it's going to be my utmost pleasure to play for the super falcons of nigeria Okay, so um, we're still, we actually went back to football, so let's uh, take it back away a bit. Um, have you had any f crush, any footballer crush before? You know, <laughs> you know, it can be a Nigerian player or, you know, have you crushed on any, okay, let's leave it a Nigerian player. Have you crushed on any Nigerian footballer before? Hmm. Okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's fine. It's, yeah. All right. Um, this is what it is, of course. Of course, of course. All right. Um, I have previously had a relationship with Odie Gallo. 
Okay. Which I'm proud to say it and this time will remain, but due to one or two things, I, I, I would say I was naive. I was naive. Okay. If what I know now, I know it then, I would not have left out there. I left him. I left him when I got admission to study medicine in UK. So we lost the contact. Then, um, of course, I have a lot of super good football players playing professional and in the national team crushing me. But um, knowing the life, life size of footballers, I'm, I'm being very careful. <coughs> yeah, um, at the moment, yeah, Samuel Chukwe is crushing me. <laughs> Samuel Chukwe is crushing me. And um, deep crush in, at that. Um, so you had a crush on Samuel Chukwe as well? So he, he, yeah, I appreciate him. You yeah, understand what I mean. And um, but before then, I, I was in a, a very private relationship with Kelechi Hanajo. That was why I include him as <laughs> when you asked me yeah. before. You understand what I mean? So I was in a very private relationship with Kelechi Hanajo. That was um, 2017. Yeah, that was 2017. So about um. Yeah, even the media carried it. Football bloggers, Niger, carried it. Lindy Keji carried it. Yeah, that year, but um, I tried not to. I pretend not to know what they're talking about. And that's what I mean. So, and um, yeah, they come, they come my way a lot. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So, um, so um, what next for, uh, what should Nigerians expect from you in your footballing career? And let's say, three two three four five years time what should you be expecting to see because a lot of people who are listening and who are watching this yeah. won't see you go global i mean you're the daughter of uh you know a nigerian legend but i want to say so what should we expect from you in say two three four five years time the best and what do you, what, what's the best for you the best is to do my best and never to give up keep pushing even though it may be hard and tough just the best and with the grace of god in my life i will get there and finally and finally what can you say to uh young footballers young ladies out there who wants to play football you know professionally moving ahead in their career mm -hmm. you know i have met some couple of young girls who play football i've been to some grassroots tournaments i see yeah. young girls playing football and all that so what, um, what is the word of encouragement you want to give them out there? Because quite a number of them might be listening to this, might be watching this. So what's this word of encouragement you want to give to them out there for them to, you know, keep believing in their footballing career? Yeah, okay. Um, first of all, I've been having this plan, and I believe God gave me the grace to, you know, make it happen. Okay. I want to, um, I want to educate female footballers you can be educated even as a female footballer i want to educate female footballers even as a female footballer you can still be a woman you don't need to be a man for people to know you're a footballer you can look sexy you can look beautiful you can look charming elegant you can come on you can loosen up you understand what i mean and i'm and it's so it's so rampant among female footballers yeah. in Nigeria. They tend to exactly. You, know, you understand? Well, how do you manage that, though? How do you do that? You could, because the way you're looking, I mean, how do you how do you tend to manage your your body looks and all that? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, that's the question a lot of people ask me and everything, and um, and I'm glad I have my body. I'm glad I have my look. I'm glad I have my magnificent, elegant, and unique, sexy, damn body. Because I want other female footballers to emulate me. Be a woman. Be a wife. Come on. No matter how you tempt to put yourself out there as a man because you play football, the truth of the matter remains you have your period every month and after the period you still ovulate and when a man crosses you when you're in your ovulation period you get pregnant 
you don't need to make yourself a man i'm not judging and i'm not judging them yeah. you understand i am of, of opinion that i'm everyone should do what makes them happy you understand what i mean but i want them to emulate me and i, w- I want them to know that I'm, as a female footballer you can be educated on the course of your being educated you can be a lawyer you can be a nurse you can be a barrister you can be a medical doctor you can be something that will enable you to have a life after football and above all family is everything family is everything family is everything all right uh it's been a wonderful time with you on the show today i must say you know the getting here it wasn't easy for you and i can understand that but it's great to have you on the show and it's a pleasure for being on the ninja players gps show yeah thank you so much getting here wasn't easy just like you said but then when you make up your mind for something like me when i make up my mind for something giving up is not an option i experience traffic while coming and i didn't even i didn't even thought of i want to turn back yeah. and start driving back to where i'm coming from because you know first stack is a very long way to this place so i said okay you know and how we started the conversation you know on social media and now you know you accepted to do this and now you're here i mean it's really something i really appreciate so uh, once again thank you for coming and thank you for making it all the way down for uh, a wonderful time on the show and hopefully hopefully we do this again maybe virtual in time you know whenever something happens mm-hmm. and i wish you all the best thank you so in your footballing career moving forward i hope uh, the deal your next deal comes true yeah uh, it favors you and as well your medical career yeah i mean i wish you all the best moving forward yeah. and uh you know just just all the best in thank your career you so much. and as well the campaign that you will be from next year so i hope you get selected and you make it to the final court for the team yeah, and the team so qualifies much. as well for yeah. the world cup so once again thank you for being on the show it's today. my pleasure all right is uh chinyere obu on the Nigerian players gps show and uh, you know guys you know what we do on the show we talk about nigerian players be it a male female wherever you are in the globe we'll bring you up on the show so it's been a wonderful time on the show with chinyere obu it is still the Nigerian players gps show my name is Emmanuel sebastian you are listening to a tv radio